This will show you how to use the array visualizer, visualizer to control various elements in an Alice program. You'll be able to translate this later into JavaScript to see how an array works to hold individual objects that you can manipulate with a for loop. So let's start out with uh, some Egyptian objects here. I went into add new objects and I went into the Egypt area and then I used these objects here. Now you can use almost any objects you want. You'll probably want to make them small enough so they show up on the screen. And I just positioned them anywhere on my uh, Alice world. And then for programming I picked on Anibus and then I moved Anibus over here. I had him turn right two revolutions. If I play the program, there's Anibus swinging around two revolutions. So I can do the same thing with Cleopatra. And she'll turn, I'll have her turn left two revolutions. And let's do the same thing for the mummy. He'll turn right two revolutions. We'll play the world to see what it looks like. All right, lots of fun. So you can see what we we're doing here is we're handling each of these separately. Now with the array, we can put them all on the array and we can loop through and handle them in a more controlled order. So the first thing we want to do is add an array visualization. In JavaScript, we would be adding in, a, we would be uh, declaring an array. But we go over here, we'll scroll all the way over to visualizations. And you want to bring on the array visualization. It's a gray one. Don't use the list visualization. You want the array visualization. And we're going to put that right on our world. So we're going to put it right here. And it's going to ask us what we want to put on this array. So I'm just going to say OK for now so you can see what it looks like. And we'll move it over here so everybody can see it. And when we've selected the array visualization, we can go into Properties and click on our Elements. And our new item is going to be Anibus. That will be our item 0. So they each have like a house address. So let's put Cleopatra as second. Third is going to be Ra. And the fourth will be our mummy. Is it OK? And now you can see if I move this guy over a little bit. See how they each have their own spot and we're putting him in zero, Cleopatra in one, Ra in two, and the mummy in three. Okay, we want to put this visualization to work, so let's bring it down into our program. And if we say program and we're going to say we want to turn it right to revolutions. And if we run our program, see our individual items. Whoa, that's not what we want. So let's give it another try. We'll bring in our for loop and we're going to run our for loop two times. And because we're programmers, we're going to use a complicated version. That shows us more detail and gives us more control. So we're going to move our array visualization in here. 
And this is our counter. This is like counting on our fingers from zero up to two times. Each time that we run through the loop, we're going to increment one. So this is going to start at zero, one, two. It's going to be done. Let's do this four times. Now, we don't want our array visualization or our platform to turn around. We want in each individual person. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under Properties, and we're going to take our elements or our indexes and have those turn. Now, we can either do the numbers, or we can say the index, which is our counter. Ah, it's not going to let us do that. So we'll put a number in here, and then we can take this index and we can put it right in here. So now as this index changes numbers from 0 to 4, this is go going to change. So let's run our program and see what happens. There's 1, 2, 3, 4. Now this is getting a little confusing. So I'm going to take these and put these in the trash. And then we can focus on our for loop. All right, let's try this again. 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, what happens if we move this up to 5 times? We run our program. and we get a problem. Alice says that we only have an index up to 4, and we went up to 5. And I pointed right here. So we can only go as many items as there are on our array. This is a common problem with arrays that we have to be careful of. So let's try it again and see if we have it fixed. 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're all done. Notice how much simpler this is. We have one single line of code that handles all four individuals in a consistent manner. And we use a loop to keep track of all of that. Now, to have this array visualization platform, it's not very good looking in the program. So we're going to go into the array visualization. We'll look at the properties. And we'll change the opacity. down to zero. So now when we play our program, the characters do what they want. And we can also move our characters to other places. Because they still have that address. The advantages of the array is everything is all kept in one line of code or a few lines of code using a for loop and things are easier to control and maintain.